Is this microphone on? Oh, <clears throat> oh, uh, uh, hi ho, this is uh, Kermit the Frog of Sesame Street News. Art, 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 art 101 with Mr. Burger. <laughs> Welcome back to another episode of Art 101 with me, Mr. Berger, and Hank. And I'm a professional artist and master educator attempting to provide you with the best in art historical content. If you like it, you like, you share, you subscribe. Right? Yep. Right. Puppy school is in session. So today, Hank and I are at the North Carolina Zoo, and we want to talk a little bit about an artist who utilized the zoo as an uh, instrument for his uh, art projects. His name is Henry Russo, a French post-impressionist, and we're going to learn a little bit about Hi. him today, aren't we, Hank? Yes, we are. Here we go. The post-impressionist painter Henry Russo applied his work, with all due respect, from a point of one who worked without a formal education or training. He would not begin to create any of his serious works until he was in his 40s, and by the age of 49, he was a full-time artist. Up until that point, he was a lawyer and primarily worked as a governmental employee, basically doing art as a hobby. Go through the same procedure. In art, he claimed he had no teacher other than nature, but we know that he had guidance from Felix Auguste Clement and John Leon Ginoma. And he was also very influenced by the artworks of Eugene Delacroix, I've always maintained that the idea of a self-taught artist is a bit of a fallacy. You're always going to learn by reading a book. You're going to learn from a resource, maybe on social media. In those times, examining other artists, getting advice from other artists, and so forth. But nobody is self-made. At any rate, his best works would depict the jungle despite the fact he never left France and there are no jungles in France. So in order to paint these jungles, he had to rely pretty heavily on other sorts of resources, like examining children's book illustrations, looking at taxidermy animals, looking at other artists' renderings of animals and plants, and most importantly were his first-hand sketches and recollections from a botanical garden and zoo in Paris known as Jardin de Plantes, or Garden of Plants. His work would inspire some of art's biggest heavy hitters, including Pablo Picasso, Max Beckman, Camille Pizarro, Paul Gauguin, and the entire Surrealist movement. He would begin to often show with the associates in the Salon de Independence. He would first show with them in 1886 with a painting called A Carnival Evening, and he would exhibit with them every year until his death in 1910, and this is also the group where he would show his first jungle painting, Surprise, in 1891. We see this tiger in a tropical storm cowering under the trees and the foliage. And we see in the very background the lightning across the sky. But after creating this, it would be more than a decade before he would return to the jungle. He would create other works with animals, like Sleeping Gypsy from 1897, which is perhaps his most famous work. And in 1905, he would return to the jungle with The Hungry Lion Throws Itself on the Antelope, a work that was revered by Henri Matisse. Side note, in fact, his group, The Fauvists, or Wild Animals, was heavily influenced in the naming from his influence and appreciation for this particular work, which was also the influence and the inspiration behind the movie Madagascar. Excuse me! You're biting my butt! He was known and thought to be a bit of a simple-minded and unworldly sort of fellow, and he used this opinion to help keep himself out of prison. In 1907, at the age of 63, he was coerced into a bank fraud scheme. His reputation and his artworks were used in his own defense, showing that he was just a simple guy that never left Paris. And these facts caused a great deal of laughter at his own expense in the courtroom. However, the defense strategy worked and he was released from jail. What a weirdo! 
The Dream, his last painting, was exhibited the same month that his leg was discovered to have gangrene in it. There was an operation on his leg which resulted in his death in September of 1910. In my opinion, Rousseau wasn't the greatest artist that ever walked the earth. However, what I love about Rousseau is his drive to work. He used what was available to him in his own community to figure out a way to paint what he wanted and when he wanted. He didn't have access to a jungle, so he discovered one by reading books and observing animals at the zoo. This is something that any of us can do, especially with the world the way that it is and our access to images and video from all around the world showing us pictures that we can use as resources in any one of our works on any number of a bazillion subjects. So keep that in mind when you can't figure out what to draw next. And I hope Hank remembers that when he's drawing his bugs, creating his insect habitats, or searching for any problem outside the box that he may encounter during his life. Thanks for visiting as we look at Henry Russo today. And we want to thank you for joining us yeah. on Art 101 with yeah. Mr. Berger and Hank. See you next time. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. <laughs>